Skirt Magazine recently interviewed Maria Teresa Barbist, a Miami-based visual and performance artist working out of the Bakehouse Art Complex. Maria Teresa uses her knowledge and background as a psychotherapist to visualize the various stages of trauma in her art. What follows is a deep dive into the inspiration and substance of Maria Teresa's work. We hope you enjoy the interview. So I am sitting here with Maria Teresa Barbist at the Bakehouse Art Complex in beautiful Miami, Florida. Okay. Um, I came across um, Maria Teresa at a group art show at the New World Museum in downtown Miami um, where she had a piece. You had one piece in that show, mm -hmm. right? And um, I loved it. And so I grabbed her and I was like, I need to do an interview with you. So you have a very, you have, you combine your visual art with performance art. Mm -hmm. This, that is a blanket statement. So why don't you describe your art to the listeners and then we'll kind of go backward about where you started and, yeah. and so on and so forth. So, um, I kind of have to start backward already. Sure. I'm, I'm originally from Austria, mm -hmm. and I, in Austria, I worked as a psychologist and as a psychotherapist in a hospital. Mm -hmm. in, uh, uh, before, before I left that position, I was in a department that focused on uh, women that experienced a trauma and were suffering from PTSD or complex PTSD. And so I felt that I just needed more diverse tools than I, I um, studied psychodrama, which was already a very creative method of therapy, which involves a lot of theater, mm -hmm. like ideas from theater, like role play and um, staging and so on and so on. But I just felt like um, I needed more, more tools. And so I decided to take a sabbatical and go to California to study art therapy. Mm -hmm. um, at an institute that's called Tamalpa Institute that was founded by a dancer, Anna Halperin, and her daughter, Daria Halperin. And I, I didn't have dance in my background, uh, but a friend of mine went there and was like, this is great, and I always wanted to be in San Francisco, and that was in, in Marin, so it was very close. It was Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And so I got into this whole idea of movement and expressive movement, also in relationship with trauma and how the trauma is kind of like, um, the memories are not just in the brain, but also stored in the body, in the physical body. Right. And so in, in therapy, it's really important to include the body because through just speaking, you would not be able to access these areas of like memories that are just physical or memories in a mm -hmm. sense. And so I started to do like more movement, dance. We did performances as well. Um, we did some writing, creative writing, and um, some visual arts drawing in that course. And I just really loved everything that was creative about it. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I decided after that um, time at the Tamalpa Institute that I really want to focus on art rather than going back to my um, job as a therapist. And I also really wanted to stay in the Bay Area. Okay. So I ended up going to the San Francisco Art Institute, mm -hmm. uh, which was this 152 year old school that was like very, um, you know, top notch for a very long time. It just closed down recently but it had a Diego Rivera mural that I saw kind of as a tourist, you know, and I looked around, I was like, oh my God, I wish I could go here, but um, never thought that I am an artist or would go to art school, but I did, you know, I just was like, okay, I don't want to go back or work as a psychologist, I want to work as an artist. So the performance was what I learned first because of that art therapy training, right? Okay. So that was kind of like the first, that was what I felt most comfortable with. So when I went to art school, that was something that I, I felt like I knew. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I knew it coming more from an um, art therapeutic perspective, but I had learned how to do that 
and I felt very confident in it. I mean, as confident as you can feel as a beginner. Yeah. But um, and so then after, you know, um, going to art school, I learned all the other kind of techniques like painting. The first times that I painted was there mm -hmm. in art school. I learned filmmaking, photography, um, sculpture. Uh, I was just kind of like diving into all the different areas. But what always stayed the same was that uh, the physical body was very important for me. The physical body in relationship with trauma, you know, psychology, memory, um, and this idea of also healing, because mm -hmm. that's where I come from, right? Therapy. But, uh, and so the paintings always ended up being very large because I, I connected them back to my bodies, you know? So they usually were like as tall as I am, 72 or 72 inches kind of, I would walk over them in paint or roll over them in paint. And was, it was kind of like very, very theatrical at the point, very intense, you know, right. very like, you know, emotional and screaming and like whatever. Yeah. And um, and so since I came to Miami, the the painting practice became more. Um, it's still very intuitive and it's still very like emotional and expressive and dreamlike, but it became a little bit more controlled in a sense. And um, and the and the performances um, are now you know more related to a painting that already exists mm -hmm. rather than making marks while I'm you know walking over it or rolling over it and um and then kind of like the the I mean the first step would be kind of like the painting and um and in a way that's performative but then I when the, once the painting is finished I reinterpret the painting back into movement Right. And that is now what I record on video. Mm -hmm. So it's not a live performance anymore. Mm -hmm. It's like a video. Uh, and I like to exhibit the paintings with the video, which I did at the New World Gallery, the New World School, mm -hmm. um, which was uh, the first time I exhibited this series, which is called um, Fallstudie Trauma, which means case study trauma. Mm -hmm. this is, Let me yeah. ask you a question. Um, and you may have mentioned this like, when you were talking about actually practicing you know as a psychotherapist did you incorporate art in any way when you were practicing before you went to California and, you know to a, as like a healing potential healing did you have any sort of incorporation of art when you were working with your patients yes because the, um, the psychotherapy method that I was taught in which is not very well known in the States mm -hmm. is uh, psychodrama and uh, that was invented by a psychiatrist called uh, Moreno mm -hmm. in Vienna, mm -hmm. but he actually immigrated to the States. Okay. And he had a clinic in, in New York, uh, uh, upstate New York. Mm -hmm. And so his, he, he had a very humanistic approach and also the sense of like, that creativity is really the, the driving force in, in healing. You know, mm -hmm. that it's not the therapist who knows everything and analyzes you and then is kind of like fixing you. Mm -hmm. But no, it is your own creativity that fixes you. You know, it's your own um, resources, your own imagination and your own um, creative force in a sense, you know. Every person has a, an assortment of roles that they play. You're a mother, you're a daughter, you're a sister, you are a teacher, you're a student, you are um, an artist, or you are a mechanic, or you are like, you know? And so, and the more diverse your role repertoire is, the more um, flexibility you have to, to deal with life. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, especially when something unexpected happens or something uh, that is taking away from you, you know, your your normality or what you usually do. Well, if you have something in your in your repertoire, like a role that you can take from, you know, then you can deal with it. Mm -hmm. So it's all about this creating of a, a diverse role repertoire, but also, you know, diversifying your skills and always like this creativity. Like, how can I find creative solutions to the problems that I have in my life. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, basically that um, and that was in that was taught in in therapy through role play mm -hmm. you know through for example um, there was a situation in your life that you felt like oh that is kind of like where it all turned south or that is still impacting me then we would stage that scene a lot of times it's with parents and siblings and or partners and then you would do like this role reversal you know you would be kind of like okay so I'm playing myself here and then I'm playing my mother on the other side mm -hmm. and then I have people play my mother and say what I said to me and I get both perspectives mm -hmm. so it's a lot about also like the getting different perspectives you know and, um, and kind of and it sounds like kind of coming outside of yourself so disassociating these traumas these things these experiences with from who you are or, or who your brain is constantly telling you you are sort of creating that separation through your imagination through this yeah. creativity yeah absolutely and also kind of like for example creating safe spaces mm -hmm. right in a sense of like um you know in a sense of like resources well if i feel triggered or if there's something going on that kind of like makes me really disconnect from myself right where can i go or how in my imagination or how can i calm myself down you know mm -hmm. in a sense of resourcing a lot you know right so. right so your work is would you describe it as abstract mm -hmm. okay so when you're t when when you're talking about abstract art, you're talking about color, line, form in its purest state. Mm -hmm. So in a state that, if you look at these elements, can't really be judged because they can't really be identified. So the kind of the 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 release of the trauma. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to, to connect the release of the trauma with the visual aspects of what it is that you that you do. Like, why is it that you choose this type of visual art to depict the trauma, depict the process of um, kind of realizing it, releasing it, and then healing from it? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you understand my question? Yes. Like, mm -hmm. why is it this form of... of visual art that you consciously or subconsciously however have selected to take you through that process mm -hmm. yeah that's a really good question so y you spoke earlier about like this dissociating like in a sense of like um you know getting away from your own you know perspective into another perspective or like finding some distance mm -hmm. to then be able to look back at, at yourself mm -hmm. from a more let's say comfortable place you know so for me painting is is an outlet that um i feel i feel comfortable with when i'm in a state of let's say emotional upheaval when I feel like very emotionally full where I'm but I don't really know what's going on which is kind of like also when we talk about symptoms of PTSD or complex PTSD that is like something that you know there is like an, an emotional uh, component um, that that is going on that is that is going on that you feel right now but it's not from here and now it's from way back then but you just feel it now because mm -hmm. it's disassociated so for me painting is allows me to kind of express that incoherent uncomprehensible emotional state which I don't know what to do with which I sit with and I'm like feeling like I have no idea what's going on I need to I need to get it out kind of right that's what I do when I paint mm -hmm. so I feel like and then I do other things too, like I write songs, um, I make films, I um, I do photography, and each medium provides a different outlet in a sense, right? Because of how the medium functions. But for me, painting is always the most emotional. You know, for me, painting is always like when I'm in, when I'm 
I'm really filled or overwhelmed with either things that are also going on on the outside because this series was also a lot about what was going on in the world like the pandemic or the war you know or um or like in more like um you know the death of a parent or the um it was it was not all like inside and it was not all memory but it was still kind of like impacting me in a way that i felt i needed to to get kind of like my emotional state out of me so i could look at it right and that is what happened through the painting mm -hmm. and it's also like, i paint with my hands so it's very kind of like um very tactile tactile yeah. and it's it's just it, it's comforting to me and the process is very i love doing it you know so it gives me some some kind of relief in that sense as well kind of like a safe space would do right mm -hmm. it's like this is i do that i get it out i leave and then i look back at it and then i'm kind of like so the, the first layer is kind of like it was acrylic and i kind of just you know smooth like smooth out the paint over it and i'm folding the canvas and it's kind of like really like physical and then and then I come back and then I do kind of like with the oil sticks, I kind of like hone in and, and try to make sense out of mm -hmm. that first layer, that first very emotional layer. And then I kind of like, and that creates these, w what are then more like shapes and figures that are more defined. And then, and then I sit with it and then sometimes I add more color and sometimes I don't and sometimes I you know, I just take it outside and take a picture and l let it be for a while and then come back to it. And then kind of like the last step would be kind of this performative aspects, which which is then taking back. So in a sense, it's kind of like this incomprehensible emotional state that is overwhelming, put out on a canvas, kind of worked on. And then I take it back in the performance, you know, when I dance with it, mm -hmm. when I kind of like look at it and dance with it. And then that allows me to integrate it. Right. So that's kind of like how that cycle works. So if I feel like I feel like when I when I do the movement after all of that, after working through it visually, that's when it's understood. I wanted to ask you about something kind of a little offbeat, but Go ahead. may as well. We yeah, totally. About. I wanted to ask you about your choice of dress mm -hmm. in your videos. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but it's something that I noticed. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I noticed it, and I have, the, I, you know, but I want, I just wanted you to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So, the the dress is all has always been incredibly important to me mm -hmm. from the get go, or like from San Francisco times. Like I would. I had this bridal store in San Anselmo where I was living. She was a big fan of Anna Halperin mm -hmm. from the art therapy program. And so she would always give me discounts on all the dresses. So I would buy like this really expensive dresses. And they would always be like pretty dresses, like, you know, bridal store. It was yeah. not just like I had white dress too, by the way, but <laughs> it's multiple white dresses. But it was also like just this floating or like the color is really important the color is probably the most important thing mm -hmm. and I can't tell you honestly why it has to be kind of like this it's it's a style right and if you see me other than in my performances I never ever dress up like that it's a dress up style right yeah. it's kind of like a fancier I don't know how to call it but like pretty, pretty in a sense, yeah, right? Yeah. So um, it's important to me. Yeah. It's and and I go around and I look for, you know, it has to be speci specifically. I I didn't. I looked for the color to be honest, right? And you know, if I would work more on it, I would probably work with the feel of the fabric, the color, the color first, and then the feel of the fabric, and then. I kind of take what I can find mm -hmm. that's very intuitive then, you know, so yeah, it's, it's surprising to me sometimes what I wear because like that yellow dress, for example, mm -hmm. right. That was like a shoulder off dress and I was like, 
would never ever wear that. So you say you would never wear it. So are, is that is that kind of like getting into a character? Yeah. Is that what? So we're talk, going back to like when the the children kind the of go into it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's definitely a role that I don't play in my everyday life. Right. You know, because I'm like very much like baggy clothes and painted usually and like like not very not very feminine in that sense mm-hmm. you know of of um dressing up or um but it is something that i love doing mm-hmm. just not in my lo- not in my everyday life kind of thing you know so this is kind of like a stage for me where i can live that part can you connect that do you connect that in your in your mind with the work so for me the conscious connection with the work is the color okay. right that is what i consciously connect with mm-hmm. the work and the other i mean i and and the other thing is like i was always like if i do a performance i i was always very much going through that process of like you would do in a theater you know you would like i would get a haircut and i would put makeup on and i would uh and i would get a costume so it is the idea of a costume you know kind of like em- embracing I guess the femininity or like that I don't do as much you know because it's it always feels like a little bit risky for me you mm-hmm. know so I'm, I'm kind of like covered up mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I guess it's like a safe space for me to to live that out so what is in the artistic creative future for Maria Teresa Arbist. <laughs> That's a really good question. So what's coming up next year? Uh, I don't know the details yet, but is an exhibition with that Dani uh, Tapia from uh, Art Scene 365. Mm-hmm. She has an Instagram plan. She is gonna curate a show um, with, with women artists that work large scale. Mm-hmm. And so I'm in talks with her mm-hmm. to include my work in that show. We don't have the details yet, but okay. that's kind of in on the horizon. And then what is more, um, the next step for me is I want to record another record. Okay. I, um, I did the first record in, uh, it was released in 2021. Mm-hmm. And so I have another five songs for an EP basically. Um, that I've been working on very hard. I've been taking voice lessons and guitar lessons. Really? And, uh, and uh, I I really wanted to uh, be able to record it in a in a studio mm-hmm. in a recording studio this time mm-hmm. because last time we it was the pandemic so we did it like in the living room and the producer had like a set up in his bedroom you know so right. it was like so I was really uh, wanting to do that and play more like the feel of like playing with a band live mm-hmm. um and that has been like i i took voice lessons already in uh, california mm-hmm. um and so this uh, this dream of like recording in a studio was always there so we'll see if it's gonna happen or not all right very <laughs> cool we're looking forward to it mm-hmm. Maria Teresa, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. (laughs) Skirt Magazine wants to thank Maria Teresa Barbist for her time.